Hello, my name is Bob Frannick. I'm the curator of Ice Age Animals and the curator of Modern Mammals here at the State Museum. Thank you all for coming to our Facebook Live field trips um, from the State Museum. Today I'm going to be talking to you about one of our most famous fossils and exhibits at the State Museum, the Cohoes Mastodon. The Cohoes Mastodon was discovered in September of 1866 during the construction of Harmony Mill No. 3 in Cohoes, New York, which is just north of Albany, New York. Um, the first bones to be found of the Cohoes Mastodon were the lower jaw and one of the foot bones. Other bones of the Cohoes Mastodon were found during construction in February and March of 1867, and Alfred Wilde presented the bones to Dr. James Hall in that year. At the time, Harmony Mill, just mm -hmm. a historical mm -hmm. fact, was the largest cotton mill in the entire world. The Cohoes Mastodon, once it was presented to the State Museum, was quickly uh, put on exhibit and has been exhibited continuously uh, since that time. The Cohoes Mastodon stands about eight and a half feet at the shoulder. He is about 15 feet long. Um, if you look at the skeleton, you'll notice that the Cohoes Mastodon has dark brown bones and light brown bones. The dark brown bones of the Cohoes Mastodon are replicas. The light brown bones are the real bones of the Mastodon. So you can see here in the, the arm is the light brown bones are the real bones and the dark brown bones are replica bones. And the replica bones are actually replicas of the Warren Mastodon, which is the Mastodon that is on exhibit at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. One of the things as a paleontologist that we look at are differences in characteristics of the bones of different types of fossils. Um, and one of the things I'm gonna to talk to you today about is the bones of, the um, characteristics of the Cohoes Mastodon itself, but also differences between mastodons and other species. One of the things that sometimes gets confused is the difference between mastodons and mammoths. Mastodons and mammoths are only very distant related, even though they both look like hairy elephants. Mammoths in this picture um, are slightly taller in general and slightly more slender, while mastodons are uh, slightly uh, kind of heftier build. One of the easier things to look at in um, the, the skeleton are the differences between the teeth of the mastodons and mammoths. The teeth of mastodons have these little uh, bumps, or what we call cusps, on the teeth. Whereas if we look at mammoths, the mammoth teeth are very flat on their surface. And this relates to their diets. Mammoths like to eat grasses and low-lying sedges. They're grazers and they likely lived in tundra environments here in New York State, where mastodons were browsers, they're herbivores, but they browsed on, um, in New York, they would have browsed on spruce and pine tree needles and twigs. Um, in other places in uh, North America and the USA, mastodons would have eaten um, fruits and nuts and tree leaves and um, other types of vegetation. They were browsers. One of the interesting things that we can look at for the Cohoes mastodon are different features of the individual skeleton itself. And one of these, some of these features, um, we can see by looking very closely at the bones. We're gonna pass by the real, one of the real tusks of the Cohoes mastodon. The real tusk weighs about 45 pounds. The tusks that are in the skeleton in the mount are only about five pounds each. They're replicas, replica, exact replicas of the real tusk. And one of the reasons why we don't put the real tusk up in the skull is it's so heavy that we wouldn't be able to hold it in place properly without it hurting the skull. So we have one of the real tusks here and we have one of the real tusks up in the collection storage so that it's safe for researchers and um, other groups to come and see it. Um, it's held at constant temperature and humidity over time. 
For the longest time, the Coho's mastodon was thought of as a juvenile mastodon. We thought he was a young or teenage individual. And we thought that because the long bones of the Coho's mastodon were not fused. So if you look at this arm, this is the ulna, just like the ulna in your arm. And if we look right here, this is the lower part of the ulna. It is not fused uh, to this part of the ulna. And just like you and I or other mammals, the bones fuse as you become an adult. So once you're an adult, the bones fuse and you can't grow anymore. So for the longest time, we thought the Toho's mastodon was only a teenager. But over about the last 20 years or so, we know that the Coho's mastodon is a lot older. If we, there were researchers that looked at the tusk of the Coho's mastodon and the tusks of proboscideans, elephants, mammoths, and mastodons, that group, the tusks grow like trees or grow like a stack of cones. So each cone or each ring represents a year. And researchers at the University of Michigan about 15 years ago looked at the number of rings in the Coho's mastodon. And we realized that there were 32 rings of the Coho's mastodon. So we know that the Coho's mastodon died when it was 32 years old. And one of the really interesting things is, is that we can look at the chemical signature in the rings and learn a lot about the life of the individual. We can learn a lot about the life of the Coho's mastodon. When we looked at these chemicals in the rings, we noticed that during the 11th ring, the Coho's mastodon looked like he was starving. Um, he, the, the, the chemical signal was of an animal that was very malnutrition, uh, had very bad nutrition. And we think that the mastodon, we know he was a male based on his size, and male elephants today go through a period called must, and they fight other male mastodon, they fight other male elephants looking uh, for our girlfriends. And what we think happened is that the Coho's mastodon during his 11th year was in one of these must battles with another male mastodon. And what happened is he got a tusk, we think, to his lower right jaw. And if I, we made a printout of his lower right jaw, um, which is on the other side of the skeleton right now, and he had a wound right here that was a circular wound, and it's, it's started to heal. And so we don't think that it... Um, killed him, but we do know that it had a very big effect on him. If you look at the tooth, this tooth isn't straight. This part of the tooth is bent um, down, and this part of the tooth is up higher. And actually, there should be another tooth behind it that never grew because of this wound. So this made it really hard for the Coho's mastodon uh, to eat. But he survived this wound, and he survived for another 21 or so years. And during his 32nd year, we think he also got into another fight. And on this side of the skull, um, if you look really closely, we made another printout because it's really hard to see with the lights. If you look really closely into the temple area of the Coho's mastodon, there's this little circular wound. And compared to the jaw, that circular wound does not have any bone remodeling, so it wasn't rehealing itself. So we think that this, the Coho's mastodon, when he was 32 years old, was in another fight with another male mastodon and got a tusk to the temple area. And that uh, tusk to the temple area is what killed the Coho's mastodon. So you can look at these uh, very small characteristics or characters within the skeleton of fossil animals and learn a lot about the individual as well as learning a lot um, about differences between other species. I'm going to continue on talking about how old the Coho's mastodon is, but I wanted to, to take a quick break. If anyone has any questions during this talk, I'm very happy to answer any questions that come up. So we were talking about chemicals. We learned that the Coho's mastodon, through looking at the chemicals in the tusk, went through a period of malnutrition, um, particularly when he was 11 years old. We can also look at chemicals like carbon-14 and learn about how old the Coho's mastodon, um, how long ago the Coho's mastodon lived. And we took two different samples 
um, from this. This is the left femur, and you can see the little cutout of the left femur here. And we made a, another printout so you can see it a little more easily. There's two little cutouts in the circles here and here. And we had those carbon dated. And those samples came back at around 13,000 years ago. So we know that the Coho's mastodon last lived around 13,000 years ago. Which is really great to learn um, about something that was, uh, we now know he was 32 years old and we know how long ago he lived. We have a question. Did mastodon live in herds? That's a really good question. Um, we think that they were slightly more solitary than what we see in modern day African and Asian elephants. Um, but as being proboscideans and compared to other species, we think that they did live in kind of groups. Um, one of the interesting things, though, is that a lot of times mammoths, particular mastodons and mammoths, particularly in New York State, are found in um, little ponds. And we think they went to these ponds to drink water and maybe get some salt from the dirt around the ponds. And a lot of times we find single individuals at the bottom of ponds. Um, a lot of the mastodon individuals that we have for New York State, and we have over 160 individuals of mastodons known from the state so far, are found in ponds. A lot of times you might have a mastodon in a pond in your backyard if you have a pond in your backyard, but you haven't um, drained it out so you don't know what's in there. Um, but there could be one in those ponds, and a lot of the mastodons that we have for New York State are in ponds that people have um, drained out in, the back, in their backyards. We're gonna walk back to the other side. I'm gonna try and show you the wound on the other side of the Cohoes mastodon's jaw. Uh, while we're walking, we have a question. What is the oldest mastodon that has ever been found? The, the, the oldest, we know, so that's it's an interesting question, and it's interesting in that it has kind of two answers. One is the oldest um, in age of an individual we think are about 50 to 60 years old. We think that mastodons lived about what modern elephants live, which is about 50 or 60 years old. This species is a really long-lived species, and we think the species was around for over five million years in North America alone. So this species is Mammut americanum, um, but the, the oldest fossil is over, I think, about three million years old. But we think the species was around for longer than that. And in relation to the Cohoes mastodon, how long did it take to find all of these bones? So that's another really good question. So initially, the first find of the jaw was found in September of 1866. And the rest of the bones were found during kind of a concentrated effort during February and March of 1867. And then the bones were presented to the State Museum shortly after that. So if we come over to the side again, just to show you, um, hopefully you can see that wound in real life rather than showing you in the picture, you can kind of see the crack in the middle of the jaw and this kind of little circular or kind of star asterisk shaped wound that's starting to heal itself right in the middle of the jaw. Just in front of that wound, you'll notice that the tooth that's in the lower jaw that's right here that you can see is pointed towards the front and inward a little bit. And if you were able to look at the top of it, it is a pristine tooth, which means that it really wasn't used in chewing. It wasn't a, a kind of an orientation that made it such that it wasn't able to be used in chewing. And the tooth behind it is not that it's missing or that it was in the jaw and it fell out, we never found it. It never developed because of that wound. One of the neat things and comparative things that I like to point out also between mammoths and mastodons is that when we say the word mammoth and we talk about things that lived during the Ice Age, a lot of times we think of an animal that is so huge that it was three times the size of anything that we had around today. Some of the mammoths that lived during the ice ages were bigger than the elephants that we have today. 
but the woolly mammoth and the mastodon were about as big as modern Asian elephants. And African elephants on average were bigger than these mastodons and woolly mammoths. This is kind of a fun fact. I'm glad you guys had the chance to um, come and visit with me today. And if you have, please, if you have some more questions, uh, let me know and we'll try and answer them with those now. Um, I'm glad that you were able to come and see this live on the Facebook Live field trips um, during this Earth Day, the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Um, and please visit us again Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Uh, for other Facebook Live field trips from the State Museum. Thank um, you guys very much, and I'll take whatever questions that you have. So we had one. We, we addressed it earlier, I think, but how much did the Cohoes Mastodon weigh? That's, a, that's another good question. We think they weighed about the same as other woolly mammoths and Asian elephants, which would be about five tons, I think. So again, this is one of our treasures of the State Museum. He's been on exhibit um, at the State Museum since he was found in 1866 and given to us in 1867. And I'm really happy to have the privilege to oversee him um, in our collection and, and in one of the exhibits. Thank you very much.